What's up, coders, and welcome to episode 5.1 of our spreadsheet service playlist. In this video, we're going to be talking about getting the max row and the max column. So this is going to be an add-on to the prior video where we talked about getting the last row and last column. So there's two methods to do this, and it's syntactically similar to get last row. This time it's get max row and get max column. So what does that mean? What's the difference? Well, when you get the last row and last column of a sheet, really what you're doing is you're getting the last row that has data in it, or the last column that has data in it. When you're getting the max row and max column, you're getting the max row and max column of the entire sheet, whether it has data or whether it has no data. So in the graphic below, you can see that our last column is 7, but our max column is 10. Similarly with last row, it's 10, but our max row is 15. So let's, let's dive into the code and see what we can do with these two. So I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I don't use get max row and get last or get max column that frequently, but it is still useful to know. So let's let's go into it right now. So what I'm going to do first is show you our sheet. And this is in the, this is the sheet that was in the slides that has our 15 rows and 10 columns and it has data uh, through these through these cells. So right now I'm actually going to grab that sheet instead to experiment with and I'm going to store it in a constant called sheet with data. Secondly, I'm going to paste these four variables. I've already copied them to my clipboard. And so what this is doing is it's just getting the last row, last column, max rows, max columns. And that will be easier because then we can just reference these variables instead of having to to go through this process every single time. So the first reason that you may want to use max rows and max columns is say you're looking at this sheet and you don't really like all these empty cells everywhere and it, it just kind of distracts you maybe. It doesn't really look professional. So you want to clean it up a bit, trim it up a bit. So let's say you want to get rid of these three columns and you want to do it programmatically. So how could you do that? Well, we're going to use a method that we haven't learned yet, but it is pretty intuitive and we'll probably learn it officially in a later video. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in sheet with data and then delete columns. That's the one we want. So this one right here. So it takes a column position and then how many columns to the right of it do we want. So the column position is going to be our last column. Last column. And then we're going to have to actually add one to that because we don't want our last column. We don't want to delete this row or this, I mean, this field of data, this column of data. We want to go plus one after that. So we want to start on this column. And then how many? Well, we can calculate that programmatically by doing max column minus last column. And what that will do is, again, our, our max column is going to be 10 right here. And our last column is going to be 7. So if we do 10 minus 7, that'll be 3. And then we'll get our three columns. So let's just save that and run it and see if this works. All right, no error. And boom, there it goes. It deleted those three. So now it looks a little bit more trimmed up and professional. Every single column of data has its own, uh, its own field. There's no empty columns. So that looks a little bit better. Um, so another reason why you may want to use these max rows and max columns is, actually let me just comment this out for now, is when you're creating a filter, say. So if you create a filter manually, you know, you would click up here, say, and click the filter button, and then you would get um, these little funnel things, these funnel icons, and then you'd get to filter it, right? So you would do the exact same process in in code except for you would use your max column and max rows so you could do it with last row and last column so let me just show you that right now first you're going to need to get a range equal sheet with data but I'll show you why you probably don't want to use last row and last column when you're creating a filter so you have sheet with data and then you want to get the range, this one right here, start in row 
one, start in row or column one. Number of rows now is going to be last row, number of columns, last column. And then we have that range, and then what we want to do with that range is we want to create filter. So again, this is a new function, but it's pretty intuitive. All it does is create a filter on the given range. And let's save it and run it. So now we are creating a filter over our last row and last column. And as you can see, it's creating a filter just with the data, which is perfect if you don't have any additional data that you want to add. But let's say for some reason someone skipped a row and they said data two, and they started adding all this data to. Let me just do that. And you have all this data now. And, and then someone comes into the spreadsheet and they want to filter by it. But you're only going to filter by the, where it ends off, where you made the filter. So it won't capture this data two or data three at all. So that's a problem. So a way to get around that, let me just take this filter off. A way to get around that is instead of saying last row, you can say max row and max column. And you can hit run. It'll create the filter over the entire sheet. And then now, let's say, you know, someone skipped a row and they said data now nine and then they just dragged this over here and they had all this data. Now it will capture, the filter will capture that newly added row because it was taking a filter now over this entire range. So that's just some way, that's, you know, there's two, there's two good ways that you would use max row and max columns. Again, honestly, I don't really use it too often. I usually use last row. There's just more use cases for last row and last column. But every, every once in a while, you'll have to use these max row and max columns. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.